black coffee Love's a hand-me-down brew Black coffee's gone away Coffee originating from Ethiopia 850 AD from a goat herder named Keldi. Keldi found his goats eating the red fruit from a tree. After trying it himself, he found a heightened sense of energy, and thus coffee was born. With over 400 billion cups of coffee consumed yearly, contributing 75% of America's caffeine intake and being the second most traded commodity in the world next to crude oil. Coffee has risen to a stature of necessity. But it affects so much in the world with more than its caffeine contents. Political, economic, social, dependency, physically, psychologically. Brazil, a good example of a country affected by coffee. The first coffee bush was planted in Suriname. In Suriname, the Dutch still possessed descendants of the Amsterdam tree, but kept them closely guarded. However, French Guiana obtained seeds from a felon who had escaped into Suriname and stole some seeds. In exchange for his seeds, the authorities in French Guiana agreed to give him freedom and repatriated him. The initial furtive attempts to get viable seeds or seedlings into Brazil failed. Suriname and French Guiana became involved in a border dispute and asked Brazil to provide an arbitrator. Brazil dispatched Francisco de Melo Paleta, an army officer, instructing him to settle the dispute and bring home some coffee plants. The hearings were successful. As a gesture of appreciation for this guest of honor, the governor's wife presented Paleta with a beautiful bouquet. Hidden among the flowers, however, were fertile coffee seeds. It's been rumored that Francisco used personal attraction and scandalous affair to acquire the bouquet. It could be said that in 1727, Brazil's now billion-dollar coffee industry was born from lust, scandal, and a single bouquet. Although famous for their tea drinking, Britain was the first European nation to embrace the pleasures of coffee drinking on a commercial basis. The need for coffee was urgent. Regularly, alcohol was the morning drink, and a replacement that wouldn't intoxicate the working man was a must. The first coffee house was in Oxford in 1650, where a Turkish Jew named Jacob opened it in a building now known as the Grand Cafe. More opened soon after in London in 1652, where there were soon to be hundreds. It's in these coffee houses that the concept of tipping was introduced. Tip, or to ensure promptness, was originally a metal coffee cup on the front desk, where customers would drop money to get a better table, service, or coffee. Coffee was definitely not a woman's drink. Coffee houses were commonly known to only include women for one circumstance: work. Whether serving the female forbidden drink or to offer more lustful services, women were by no means allowed to sit down and enjoy a cup of coffee with the men. Men would go to the coffee houses, have their cup of coffee, and go to the back with one of the prostitutes. Return home drained of stamina, unable to appease their wives. Women started looking at coffee as an evil drink. Even going as far to write a petition against the drink in 1674, saying incredibly cruel things about the men's favorite drink. Coffee leads men to trifle away their time, scald their chops, and spend their money, all for a little base, black, thick, nasty, bitter, stinking, nauseous puddle water. Among many other humorous lines questioning the effect of coffee pertaining to manhood, excessive use of that newfangled, abominable, heathenish liquor called coffee. Which rifling nature of her choices treasures, and drying up the radical moisture, has so enucked our husbands, and crippled our more kind gallants, that they're to become as impotent as age, and as unfruitful as those deserts where that unhappy berry is said to be brought. Coffee's introduction to the Americas is fascinating, if not remarkable. Gabriel Mathieu de Clue was a French naval officer serving in Martinique, who in 1720 went to Paris on leave. With assistance and personal charm, he acquired a coffee tree, which he took with him on the voyage back. The tree was kept in a glass case on deck to keep it warm and prevent damage from salt water. The journey was eventful, or at least De Clue's journal of the voyage was. Pirates from Tunis threatened the ship. There was a violent storm, and the plant had to be tied down. Then the ship was stranded, and the drinking water was rationed. De Clue had gave most of his allowance of water to the coffee plant. Once the ship arrived in Martinique, and the coffee tree was replanted in Prebear. Where it was surrounded by a thorn hedge and watched over at all times, it grew and multiplied. And by 1726, the first harvest was ready. By 1777, there were between 18 million and 19 million coffee trees in Martinique. 
196 years later, in 1971, three men by the names of Jerry Baldwin, Zev Segal, and Gordon Boker founded a small Seattle coffee shop in the Pikes Place Market that you may recognize, Starbucks. The three partners all enjoyed fine coffees and exotic teas and believe they can make it big in Seattle with their idea and concept. Each invested $1,350 and borrowed another $5,000 from the bank to open the Pikes Place store. Baldwin, Seagal, and Boker chose the name Starbucks in honor of Starbuck, the coffee drinking first mate in Herman Melville's Moby Dick. It wasn't until 1982 that Howard Schultz, a big time New York businessman, caught interest. Schultz started from the bottom and worked his way up, making subtle suggestions of pitching ideas. It wasn't until 1983 that Schultz visited Italy, but more importantly, Italian coffee houses. Howard was entranced by the personal charm and romance that the coffee houses imbued. With friendly service, clever hand prepared drinks, and just the overall atmosphere the coffee shops possessed, Schultz convinces the founders of Starbucks to test the coffee house concept in downtown Seattle, where the first Starbucks cafe latte is served. This successful experiment is the start for the Starbucks company that you know today. With 16,706 locations today, an average annual income of around $10 billion, there is no doubt that you have either tried or been affected by Starbucks, as has the entire coffee industry. An entire planet taken by storm by the magic bean. Coffee, the black gold that's seen diversity in the best and worst definitions of the word. From Ethiopia to the bottom of your Starbucks cup, coffee is one drink that's here to stay.